Jeremy walks in as Fiona vacuums the living room. There he is. Yep, here I am. Somebody miss me? Maybe. Where were you? Jeremy puts his keys away. I was out. You were out where? I was out with a friend. Was that friend male or female? Fiona turns off the vacuum. He was a he, and I'm gay. I noticed you didn't come down for breakfast. Did you have a sleepover? Jeremy glares at Fiona. You can glare as much as you like, but I'll keep talking until you spill. We're not doing this. Did you sleep with someone last night? Oh my god, what do you think? So that's a yes then? Look, I met Jim last night while battling in the pub quiz. I won by one point. And why is that a part of the story so important? I'm adding context. Speed this up, please. We got talking. There was chemistry. So you did sleep with him? I'm not answering that. You're blushing. Jeremy hides his cheeks with his hands. Whatever. Jeremy hands Fiona a bag of muffins. She takes them. Before we moved on to other topics, I'm happy for you. Thank you. Fiona puts away the muffin bag. She keeps one and unwraps it. Hey, so listen. I saw Owen in a diner. Is that breaking news? Let's see if CNN wants to cover it. <sighs> Owen was with a woman. Oh. She was a tall, pretty brunette, <clears throat> who was more fuckable than you. Thanks. What were they doing? They were sitting down talking. And by talking, I mean doing some serious flirting. My eyes were captivated. Did anything unusual happen apart from the flirting? Uh, yes, but don't shoot the messenger, okay? I'll hold out on promising that. All right, well, the fuckable brunette kissed Owen. Did she kiss him on the mouth or the cheek? Uh, cheek. Oh, maybe she's a friend. Uh, <laughs> it didn't look like it. I felt it was emotional. There was pain etched in Fiona's eyes. Are you okay? Yeah, why wouldn't I be? I, I'm sure nothing's happening. I just thought you deserved a heads up, considering he's... Well, pretty much all you think about. He's not at all what I think about. Fiona sounds emotional. Yeah, sure. Evidence number one, I caught you Googling him last night. So what? We all Google people. Evidence number two, I also saw you checking out his ass while he was putting clothes on the washing machine. My standing position is that Owen is hot and I want him to be happy, so I'm pleased he found someone. Are you sure? Yes. Should I tell him that you know he's dating? No. Why? I don't care. All right, if you're sure. I am. Jeremy walks off and Fiona picks up her cell phone and makes a call. Tim, it's Fiona. Would you just like to have that date? Fiona rolls her eyes. Great. Why don't you come pick me up for lunch, say around 12, and we'll do that. See you then. Bye. Fiona hangs up the phone. Let the mind games begin. Tim and Fiona are in the kitchen laughing. Jeremy and I enter. We've just been to the gym. Hey. So, what are your favorite types of a train? I'll tell you in a minute. Owen, let me introduce you to Tim. I put out my hand for a shake and Tim ignores it. Okay. How do you two know each other? Uh, they went to college together. I moved away, recently came back into town, and got into contact with Fiona. The rest is history. Fiona, would you like to meet my friends? They'd love to meet you. And I'm sure Fiona would love to meet them too, right? So I could see you, Tim, and his friends in a field, train spotting. That could be fun. You'd spend all day complaining about the weather. It would be a Freddy Krueger nightmare come true. I'm sure it wouldn't be that boring. Yeah, you tell him. All we do is sit around in a field complaining about our life. <laughs> not that it's not fun. Oh. It sounds really fun. Fiona glares at me. Tim, would you like to go out for lunch, just the two of us? Oh, of course he wouldn't. Well, I would love to. Should we go now? Yep, let's go. Bye, losers. Fiona and Tim exit the kitchen. Fiona has a smile on her face. 
All right, what's going on? Who says anything's going on? One minute she's single and the next she's bringing strangers into her home. She's not up to anything. Yes, she is. What is it? Some would assume you're up to something too. What is that supposed to mean? It means... I saw you in a diner this morning with an attractive woman who kissed you on the cheek. And you told Fiona? Well, yeah. And she's trying to make me jealous. Well, maybe, but why do you care unless you like Fiona back? I knew she liked me. Yeah, and you're about to lose her. Bye. Jeremy walks off as I think through my options. I enter my local English pub, looking around for her and bingo! I see Fiona and Tim laughing. I make my way to the barber keeping an eye on them. Order a foster beer. My attention stays glued on Tim and Fiona. Finally, after a beat, Fiona spots me looking. She walks over. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm here for a drink. No, you're here to spy on me. Why would I waste my time spying on you and I have a life? It's Friday afternoon and you're spending it in a pub spying on a pregnant lady. Oy. Look, it's a free world. I'll do what I like. Get over yourself. Fine. Tim and I will just have to leave. No! Damn it! Aha! Why no? What's going on? A drink is put down on the nearest table next to us. Look. Nothing's going on. Yes, there is something. Admit it. Fine. I will. I have a tiny crush on you. You like me. Why is it so hard to admit when it's so obvious? I said I had a tiny crush, that's all. What? Do you take me for a fool? I take a sip of my fosters. Finally, I put down my glass. Come on, Fiona. You know it's a crush. You have a crush, which in my world equals liking someone, which you do. Fine. I want you. There, I admit it. What do you expect me to do with this information? I expect you to end your date with Tim so you can leave with me and go somewhere private to talk. That's not happening. Why not? Fiona gets close to me, she whispers in my ear. I won't because I know your dirty secrets. I'm not playing your games. Hang on. I'm confused. Jeremy saw you in a diner with a woman. Okay. And you want to see us both at the same time. That's not happening. Fiona, that's not what I want either. Liar! I'm telling you the truth. You can't admit the truth. You're a creep. I hate you. Fiona. I'm going back to my date. If you want something to happen between us, I suggest you find a way to be honest with me or you lose me. Goodbye. Fiona turns her heel and exit back to her table. She sits down and Tim picks up her hand and kisses it. And with that, I walk out of the pub. I enter the house. The builders I hired to renovate the home are packing up to leave. Ah, uh, Owen. Wanted to let you know the renovation will be done by tomorrow, so you'll finally have the house all to yourself. Oh, thanks, David. I would have thought you'd be happier than this. What's wrong, buddy? I'm having trouble involving a woman. Ah, uh, a tale so old. Jeremy enters with a bag of clothes. God, why does every gay man have to hit on me the day I get a boyfriend? When I'm single, there's none to talk to. Uh, one problem at a time. Oh? Who's got a problem? Oh, have a guess. Oh, you have a problem. Jesus Christ, are you this stupid? All right, what's going on? Jeremy puts the clothes away. Uh, I'm guessing Fiona's rejected your advances and... You're heartsick. She's out with another man. Oh, dear God, she doesn't like Tim. What? You heard me? Fiona's only dating him to make you jealous because she's hopelessly in love with you. Well, I gathered that, but Fiona told me you saw me in a diner with another woman. She thinks you want to date two women at the same time. Yeah, it's as ridiculous as it sounds. I'm dating two women. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> you were seeing another woman, and maybe she thinks Tim is a safer option. But on the other hand, maybe Fiona doesn't want to end up heartbroken when you choose that woman over her. 
But I wasn't seeing another woman. Okay. So who was the woman at the diner? My cousin. You're a great liar, but you ain't fooling me, son. I don't get played. I'm telling you the truth. Okay. Explain further. Fill in the gaps. My grandmother Elsie had a sister. Bethany had a daughter called Lena. And Lena had a daughter, my cousin Ella, hence me, meeting Ella today at a diner. Are you telling the truth because I need to see proof of that? I have a photo of my grandmother and Bethany, plus pictures of Lena and Ella together. That should prove it. I'll take out my cell phone and show Jeremy the photos. Is he telling the truth? Well, yeah, he is. Look, did you tell Fiona any of this? Did you fill her in? She didn't even give me a chance to. I think you should fight for her. Oh, what's the point? She's probably having sex with Tim as we speak. <laughs> yeah, right. That man isn't a real man. Who wants to go train spotting? <laughs> You're offending people. Hint me. The front door opens. Hey, what's up? Jeremy was just about to tell me Tim isn't a real man, weren't you? Uh, uh, actually, Owen has something to tell you first. And the renovation of the house should be completed by tomorrow afternoon. Took you long enough. You're welcome. Uh, goodbye. Jeremy and David exit. So, what is it? Speak. I have a cousin called Ella. She's the woman Jeremy saw me with at the diner. Oh, good one. Why don't you ask him? I exit and head upstairs. I hope you're not lying to me again. I'm packing a suitcase. Fiona enters. Well, Jeremy told me everything and... Fiona spots me packing my stuff. Where are you going? It's my best friend's wedding tomorrow. You don't have best friends. Not here anyway. Oh. I close my luggage and zip it up. Yeah, but I do in Ireland. The thing is, I'm meant to be his best man. So, you have to be there. Gotcha. I promised him I'd throw him a great bachelor party. So I have to be there. So you're not leaving because of our fight? It wasn't a fight. It was a misunderstanding. It's over. We're good. I'll pick up my luggage. Are you sure? Does that mean you'll be back? Well, I still have to pay you for your work on the house. I've been thinking, um, you don't have to. What do you mean? Veronica made me co-owner the house next door in case I need a place to stay or cash for the baby. Oh, well, that's nice of her to do that. Yeah, um, you don't have to pay. Oh no, I am. I'm paying big time. Fiona laughs. You're a dick sometimes. That's what my friends call me. And oh, I uh, have a major surprise for you and the baby when I come back. What surprise? What is it? I get my passport out of my drawer. Well, you'll just have to wait and see, won't you? Okay, but to confirm, you are coming back. Yes, you can relax. I'll miss you. I'll miss you too. If you don't come back, these two months have been the best of my life. Thank you. And I agree. And I will come back. Would it be weird if we hugged? Oh, well, not at all. We're friends. I put down my luggage. Fiona walks over to me and hugs me. We embrace for a beat and... And I pull away fast. What the hell is that? Ow! Are you okay? I think my water just broke. You're having a baby now. You're a month early. My doctors warned me that could happen. Oh, good lord. While pulling out your hair, could I suggest you drive me to the damn hospital, please? Uh, yeah, sure, Jeremy. Her water's broke. I'm having a baby. Ow! On this eventful moment, we sound out. This was Hello from Ireland. It was voiced by me, Emerson Peary. The show was written, produced, and directed by Joao Nasita. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Hello from Ireland. And please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And be sure to subscribe to the podcast on all your favorite podcast listening apps. Also, 
please share the series with family and friends. Thank you. That Love Podcast is active on Twitter at That Love Pod and on Instagram and Facebook at That Love Podcast.